Okay, so I've got here the um, plan of my bathroom drawn fairly completely, um, and it's got enough detail, at least, for me to draw some internal elevations, uh, like you see in the example here with a different bathroom. So I'm going to draw elevations of uh, all four sides. Well, I'm going to set all of those out. I may only draw one or two of them. But uh, once you get the basic idea and um, the method, then you should be about to draw all your elevations for the bathroom. And uh, so I'm going to start with the elevation that's to the north, which is the simplest. You can see here that I've already drawn the cross section up above. So instead of drawing it up above, I'm going to draw it down below. And uh, I can simply that I've used already for my plan. We'll use the wall cut layer and then project lines just using the line tool and then snap into the corner of the front of the room. I'm going to draw a line straight down uh, with ortho turned on. The vertical line there. And then I'm going to change to my floor layer and draw another line from the bottom of that line straight across. So it's very similar to drawing a section, except it's easier. Uh, and then I can go back to my wall layer again and uh, draw another line, this time from the other side of the bathroom, down to my floor, and then maybe fill it those together. So nothing too difficult there. These are all things I'm sure you could do in your sleep. Uh, now I need to know the height of my uh, my bathroom, or this, the apartment generally, and uh, I don't need to remember that. I've already drawn the section, so I can easily just go and measure off now from the section. You can see there I've drawn it at three metres. And so I'm simply going to offset that line 3,000. It's like the line that I've drawn for the floor instead of above. And now again, I can fill up these together. And what do you know? I've got a rectangle. Nothing too difficult there, but that should encompass the space, that whole bathroom. So everything else should fit inside that. Now I need to go and look at some layers. So I'm going to need layers for uh, the internal elements in my bathroom. I've only got a bathroom layer there uh, that I've used for the plan. Uh, so I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, and make uh, this A bath tile and A bath fitting. Fitting or fixture would be okay there. Um, and so I'll make the um, bath tile layer as light as like it can be, so 0 0.13 or even 0 0.09. I'll just give that a unit colour. And the bathroom fitting layer I'll make just a little bit heavier, so I'm going to make that 0.18. And again, just give that a unit colour. Uh, so I've made the bathroom tile layer current, so I'll probably change that in a minute anyway. Uh, so I've got the, oh, and the doors, so I should have layers for the doors already. Yes, I've got layers for door and projection, I'm just going to change to that layer now and draw my door first before I do the tiles. So I'll draw a line, again, just projecting from the corner of the door, down to the line of my floor. Make sure it's perpendicular, so snapping perpendicular to that floor line is often the easiest way of making sure it's a vertical line. And then I can draw it on the outside. Perpendicular. And because I know the doors are uh, have a 40 mil, we just offset 40 mil either side. And then I'm going to offset the 
again, this time 2100, on the floor, straight up. Take that in line to the door projection layer, and now I can offset down 40 mil again. And then to simply fill up those lines together, to get a simple elevation of the door. Yep, sure. Why do the other, the second one, the offset? The one at the top? <coughs> because we don't see that in plan. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so while I'm at it, I can draw a chevron. Uh, and I'll usually just use the door swing layer for that, rather than making a new layer. <coughs> the door swing layer is going to have to be my weight. Anyway, so then I can just draw lines to show the direction the door opens. So that's what that's called, that's a chevron. And so then we have the shower. So I'll change to my bathroom fixtures layer or fittings and draw a line from the corner of the shower. Again, perpendicular to the floor. Uh, for now, I'll just make that uh, uh, 2,000. So I'll just offset 2,000 and uh, I'll put that new line onto my bathroom fitting layer as well. Fill up those together and I've got a simple outline of the shower. And I can uh, do some tiles in between that and the door, so I'm simply going to offset then 18 <coughs> from the line of the floor. Uh, and uh, I'll do the tiles inside the shower later, so I might just trim this now. Using trim, I'll just select these two lines as my cutting edges and then trim these lines back. Again, this line can now go onto the tile layer. And then I'll change to my tile layer to make a hatch. So up until now, all of these things, hopefully things you can do fairly easily, but now when I go to do the hatch, um, it's good to remember that you can use the user defined option up here and then simply put in a spacing. So if you have, let's say, uh, 300 tiles, that might be a little bit big for this room, but this is an example, uh, 300, and then I'll make the pattern double, choosing the options panel underneath. Uh, it's not showing me a preview, so I'm going to go and click on uh, pick points in the top left corner, and now you can see I'm getting a, a preview, but the tiles are starting um, at a fairly random point. I'll use set origin as well. I'm going to choose the corner of the door. And now you can see the tiles start from that corner. Right, so again, now I look at it, 300 maybe is a little small, so maybe I'll try 200. You can see there that comes up a bit more clearly. Maybe I can even try 150. And again, you can just get a preview as you move the cursor over that area. So I'll click now and then press enter to finish the tile. Um, to do the tiles next to the toilet, we need to have the elevation of the toilet first. So again, when you're setting out the, or thinking about the way you draw the elevations, uh, you might need to even draw a line to work out where that would be projecting. And you can see here that I can get an elevation that does cut through in between the shower and the bath. And so that way I don't need to show the bath at all. And uh, so again, I can just show the elevation of the toilet, ignoring the bath. And in the uh, on the home panel, you can use the insert option there and go to more options. And then browse 
to go to the folder on the P drive. I'll just show you that again on the P student resources drive. You can go to interior design and then work head library. Uh, in blocks 2D and then bathroom. Uh, then WC pans. We do have some elevations. You can see they clicked on the previews. These are all in the wrong direction. So I'm going to open up the other folder. And you can see in here we do have, there we are, there's an elevation from the side. Uh, so sometimes these used to select them and then look at the preview up on the right. So I'll double click on the one that I want. And click OK. And noticing that I've got these two options ticked, insertion point and rotation. And then so you can see that the insertion point isn't going to put the or have the toilet snap to the ground automatically. So I can just place that anywhere. Noticing that it's still asking me for the rotation angle, so I'm going to press enter to keep it at zero. And now I can select the toilet and then click the move button, snap to the back and uh, to the base point there. Move it over perpendicular to the wall. Select it again and then click the move button and do the same thing, this time clicking on the bottom and snapping perpendicular to the floor. Uh, so now I could either offset a line or even just draw a new line from the tiles that I've already drawn. Cross to the right. And I might just use grips to drag that line back. To the door. And now again I'll go to hatch. And you can see then if I try to pick points inside that area that it's not going around that block. It's not going around the toilet. Uh, I'm going to check some of my options there for island detection. So up here in the options panel, I'm going to choose the first, uh, or sorry, choose the uh, down arrow there and go for normal island detection and then try again. And you can see it's gone around part of the WC but not all of it. So I'll click just to place it and then press enter so you can have a good look at that and see there exactly what's happened. It's gone around the system but not the pan. So I'll delete that. I'm just going to select it and delete it. And I'll just try another option because it's good to know you can sometimes experiment and get the right result. So I'll try outer island detection. And then again, hovering there, you can see that's still not working. It's getting this island in here, but it's not working for the rest. So those options aren't going to give me what I want. Do you remember what to do then if the hatch boundary isn't coming up automatically? Maybe you can draw a polyline. Okay, so always remember that. If the hatches don't come up automatically, and often they won't, um, the hatch boundaries, then you can always draw a polyline manually. And so with the polyline tool, I'm going to start on the corner here and go across and just trace that pan, or the whole WC. But I'm going to turn ortho off to make it easier so it doesn't try and snap to right angles. And I'm also not going to be too fussy and try and follow the curve. I'm just going to trace this roughly. Because remember, it's just the edge of the tile. And often it can even go over the curve, or you'll find that often the tile will only hit certain parts of the curve anyway, so you may not even notice all these inaccuracies. So just tracing it fairly roughly. You can always come back and adjust this boundary as well. So people often think it's um, too much work or really difficult doing these boundaries. But remember, this is a, it's a new thing, the fact that um, the boundaries get made through automatically. And in most programs, most graphics programs, for example, you still would need to make the boundary yourself. So it's a, it's a fairly standard thing, drawing boundaries for your patterns. So then you can see I'm just tracing around the curve very roughly, just snapping to points where it's easy, and any detail.
pub area is not worrying too much at all about following it very closely. And so then back up to the top and I've come all the way around back to the floor and so I can have a, if you remember type C and then it's to close or you can right click and choose close and that's the same thing. So now I'm going to go and do hatch again but this time, instead of using pick points, I'm going to choose select. And then choose the polyline I've drawn. And you can see it hatched it perfectly. Okay, so I'm just going to press enter. And uh, that completes the hatch. So I might just try the back part using pick points again. So I'm going to use pick points here and try and uh, again with pick points pick inside that area. Again checking the boundary options there. Maybe normal might be better but it's still again not working very well. So again for that little spot there behind the toilet I've got to go and draw another polyline. Just tracing these points. Okay, so again, when you finish, right click and close. <laughs> and now again, when I go to hatch, instead of pick points, I'll choose select. This time, use that small polyline. And if I need to put it in when I'm going to go in, start top, press enter. And I've done the tiles. So, um, I'll do another video to show you how to do the other one directions but remember you can project those off the plan you don't need to copy the plan on one side before drawing the elevations so if I've got the WC and the shower showing in this elevation what's missing and this is a good test just to see if you're thinking in the right way about what you would see if you are looking at, at an elevation of one side of this room No, no, you, you draw the door closed, so that's fine, the way I've drawn it, yeah. But looking at the elements in the bathroom there, what would we see if we're looking to the north side, looking to the top, I've drawn the WC, working across, we've got the door, we can see that. We can see the tiles on the wall. You could put a toilet roll holder, I suppose. Not a bad thing to include, but, um, but then again, working across, we've got the tiles on the other side of the door. I can see the shower. Yeah, you can put the shower head in, but then, yeah, I'm going to do that too, but I've got to put some elements in the shower, so I'll do those after I've got the elements in there. But, um, but then what other eight major element coming across further? What about the bench? Right, we're going to see that too, aren't we? Because it's cutting through here. The elevation, even though you're not going to show things in section, you still need to think of it as a section. So if you imagine you've got a line coming through here, Right, you can make it miss the bar, but there's no way it can miss the bench. So you're going to be cutting through that bench no matter what. So again, I'll go to my fittings layer and draw a line from the edge of the bench. Uh, sorry, not up, down to my floor. And then, what's the standard uh, height for vanity, or have you been doing? Seven. Yep, that's fine. Yep. So it depends. Actually, if you've got different sinks, then it can it can vary. But yeah, seven hundred is okay if you're doing it flush. So um, yeah, so I'll just do that. So then uh, I'll offset again seven hundred. And put this on. Well, I'll put it onto the fittings layer for now. But the last thing I want to show you is uh, that this should be a heavier line weight. So we don't really need to show the sink here because we can just pretend that it's cutting through the bench only. But it is cut, so it should be a heavier line. So as well as the bathroom fitting 
layers that I've already made that has a light line weight and that's, that's really bathroom fittings in projection and then I'll make another layer bathroom fitting or fixtures in section or cup so I'll make that 0.35 I might make a different colour just so it stands out from the other layers. So these two lines should be on that cut layer and you can see there now they've got a heavier line weight. And that'll help when you go to do the shower because uh, you may not need to show as many things, well definitely things that are behind the bench you won't show. And because we're drawing the, the shower in elevation, we can show the shower screen and we maybe don't need to show the things inside the shower. And uh, so that's almost enough for the internal elevation for the uh, for the bathroom, <coughs> the north elevation. Uh, if you want to work ahead and have a go at doing the eleva elevations, just try to use the option up here. So you've got the uh, view cube with north, south, east, and west. And when you move your cursor over that cube, you'll see these curved arrows come up. And you can use those to rotate your whole sheet or your whole um, layout. And uh, so I'm going to click on that arrow there pointing to the left. And that's, you can see, rotated the whole view anti-clockwise. <coughs> and so then I could project the next bathroom elevation, starting at the beginning with the wall cut layer, drawing a line on the side over here and either above or below, it's up to you. I'll do this down below. And I'll still line from the other side. I won't do all of this, I'll just make a start on it. And then, just want to finish off that rectangle. So again, I can offset, we know it's 3000. Fill up those. So that's the room uh, viewed from that side, but maybe I would move that further away. Because remember, you're going to need to have a floor plan on a sheet like this, and you don't want the elevation coming up in that floor plan. So you'll need to move the elevations far enough away from the floor plan so you don't see them inside those viewports, but otherwise, you can lay them out around your plan and that means that as you update the plan you're not going to have to constantly copy it and rotate it to project off all the different elevations. Okay, so don't be afraid to use these arrows to rotate the view and now I can just keep clicking on that anti-clockwise or the left arrow there to rotate it back to the angle I started on. So like I said, I'll give you some time to work on those elevations and uh, it shouldn't take you long to draw all the elevations for, for that bathroom and then you've got, um, I'm sure most of you are going to have another bathroom over here and then uh, the laundry as well, you really should do a el set of elevations for those but uh, that's optional really because it's not listed in the brief. So is that all really clear? Drawing? Uh, not necessarily, no. Well, actually, not in that elevation, but if in the other elevation, you might, actually. So the one looking to the left, because you'd be looking straight at the, the shower from that side, and so maybe you could put the shower head in that one. But if you've got a shower screen that's enclosed, then uh, you maybe don't need to show all of that detail. So it's going to depend on your design a little bit as well.